coming to you from the Carter Subaru Studios. Well, kind of. Welcome to the Big Show. This has been a crazy uh, day, man. I will tell you. I am actually on vacation right now. Just taking a little four-day weekend with my wife. And we got the word late last night that one of the major presidential candidates was available to do an interview with us this afternoon. So I'm coming to you from a radio station at an undisclosed location. Now, I would like to welcome to the big show the Republican nominee for President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. Mr. Trump, it is a pleasure. Thank you for coming on with me this afternoon. About 15 years ago. That's a long time, but I still remember. We spent a lot of time talking about our kids and about family, and I, I saw a different side of you that I think a lot of potential voters have not seen yet. Well, family is so important to me, and it should be important to everybody, but nothing like family. With all the success and everything else, nothing like family, Gary. Okay, we'll get back to that in a minute. Let's talk about some of the issues here. Uh, you're coming to the Seattle area tomorrow night, Everett to be exact. Why are you spending time and energy here in Washington State when it is one of the bluest of blue states and appears unflippable? Well, it's true, but we seem to have a great receptivity there. We've gotten very good numbers from other states where we're sort of in the same position. And we are doing, I guess, we're a little bit of a different kind of candidate, frankly. And I am in Los Angeles, and I'm in different parts of California. I said, let's go up. And uh, our senator over there, as you know, he's been a tre- we've had tremendous support from some of the people in Washington State. And I, would, I said I would do it. And I hear they're going to have a very big turnout. So I said, on the way back, I will be uh, doing it. I'll stay there. And uh, I, I love the state. I have so many friends there. And I said, let's do it. Who knows uh, if it's uh, the right thing or the wrong thing. But as far as I'm concerned, it's the right thing to do because I, I have always loved the state. Well, and you talk about things that should be keenly interesting to, to voters here because immigration is such a major issue. I know you're giving a major speech on that later this week. Washington right. is a border state. Our border is with Canada. Uh, are we, eventually, would we need a wall between Washington and, or between the U.S. and Canada? Well, I think it's unlikely, to be honest with you, and I think that, uh, you know, a lot of good things are going to happen with Washington State if the politicians are careful, but you better be careful because you know what's going on with Boeing, and Boeing's building massive facilities in China, and then they'll drop their currency, and they'll sort of start devaluations, as they always do, and then they'll start taking your business away, and you won't have very much of Boeing left. If I'm president, that won't happen. But believe me, they're looking to get your businesses out of there. And you know how bad the trade deals have been for Washington State because they're very unfair deals. Now, you live with them, but we should do more than live with them. But the deals have been very, very unfair, the trade deals that have been made. And I know you've talked a lot about the trade deals. What could you do specifically to keep Boeing from outsourcing? Well, look, I mean, basically, you have to create something where other countries, and mostly it's countries, but other countries are not devaluing their currency. You look at what's going on with China, you look at what's going on with other countries that are competitors of ours and competitors in the sense of Boeing, and they make it impossible for your companies and your local companies to compete. And before you know it, they won't even be making the planes in Seattle. They won't even be making the planes in the state of Washington. And you watch. I mean, uh, Hopefully I get in, so you're not going to have that problem. But if I don't get in, I guarantee you, someday you'll be calling, you'll be saying, you know, I remember when this guy Trump was saying this is exactly what was going to happen. And you'll see what, you look at what's going on with China, look at the facilities they're building over there. So you better be very careful because they're looking to take your business. Another issue that uh, you talk about that's critically important to our region is that of sanctuary cities. Seattle is a sanctuary right. city. Washington's a de facto sanctuary state. And we we see the real-life repercussions. There was a, an English 
illegal here a few years ago. Got pulled over by the police in a traffic stop. They didn't ascertain his immigration status. A couple weeks later, he walked on the campus of the University of Washington, shot and murdered an ex-girlfriend. When you see that this guy had actually been pulled over by the police and they couldn't determine his status, we start to see some of the real-life consequences of what you're talking about there. Right. Well, that's one of thousands of instances. It's all over the country. And sanctuary cities are out. Basically, they're just a way of protecting people coming in. In many cases, and you have people that are being protected that shouldn't be allowed in our country that are at the highest level of criminal element. They're killers. And sanctuary cities are out. And not only that, our police force, when they hear about sanctuary cities or when they hear that illegal immigrants, they don't even fight the same way because they feel there's nothing they can do. I mean, there's just nothing they can do. It is so unfair to the families of those that, I mean, you have, I mean, people being killed by, by such large numbers and we can't allow it to happen. And sanctuary cities are over. Is it's over? I mean, is this a state's rights issue or is this something that you think the federal government can mandate? How do you do that? Uh, the federal government's going to have to get involved, and they're going to have to get involved very sharply because the crime is incredible that's coming out over our borders, and the federal government is going to have to get involved. Okay, a couple of other issues in the news today. Uh, the Obama administration today said they are ahead of schedule. They've now admitted 10,000 Syrian refugees. A lot of governors have said no. The governor of our state, Washington, Jay Inslee, he said we will welcome as many Syrian refugees as possible. Can they be properly vetted, and does this pre- prevent or present a security risk to states like ours? The answer is very simple. No, it cannot, and they cannot be properly vetted. And it's shocking that your governor is enthusiastically accepting these people. All you have to do is look at Germany and look at different countries in Europe and look at look all over and look at the disaster that's taking place. Take a look at Germany. Take a look at Paris and take a look at, at Nice and so many other places. Uh, look at Belgium. Uh, you... To, to accept the people, many governors refuse, and they fight very hard. They fight as hard as you can fight not to allow this to happen. And you're right. Obama wants it to happen, and Hillary Clinton wants it to happen, and Trump will not allow it to happen for a minute. Okay, a couple other quick things in the news today. Uh, Huma Abedin announced she is splitting from Anthony Weiner. I know you released a statement about this earlier today. Does does Huma Abedin's relationship, does it reflect on your opponent, Hillary Clinton? Terribly. I mean, I said a long time ago that she's married to a guy who is a disaster. I've known him for a long time. Uh, Here's a guy that what he's done over the Internet is disgusting, and he's a pervert and just a very sick guy. And she is married to him. And she, you know, by the way, check a look, you know, take a look at where she worked, by the way, and take a look at where her mother worked and works. You take a look at the whole event. But in the case of Anthony Weiner, she's married to a guy that is uncontrolled and uncontrollable. He's, He's a sick person. And, you know, she has access to classified information. Uma Abedin has access to classified information. How Hillary got away with that one, nobody will ever know. But to think that it's very likely that much of this information Anthony Weiner would know about. And I think it's something that was terrible. At the same time, I think knowing Weiner... I think Uma Abedin did a very, very smart thing when she finally decided to leave him. Very smart. Yeah, I, I'm amazed because everybody talks about the gender gap in this campaign, and yet you have Hillary Clinton, Uma Abedin. They surround themselves by men who degrade them. And you know, I say this as a as a husband and as a father of three daughters. I I don't understand people surrounding themselves with people who degrade them like that. Well, he's a sick person he's a sick puppy and so you know it just happened and it's uh you know it's actually sad in many ways but he's a very sick guy and you know i said if you look back you'll see that i said at the beginning the worst thing she can do is marry this guy he's a you know i've known him because he's a politician i've known him for quite a while and i i understood uh, that he had difficulties and certainly when it came out 
Uh, I don't know if these people get cured. It doesn't seem like it. But for him to have, in this position that he's in, to have done it again, and this time with a baby at, at his side, a little baby at his side, is uh, hard to comprehend. Yeah, it sure is. Hard to comprehend. Are you, are you following uh, 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick uh, refusing to stand for the anthem? He talked about both you and Hillary in his comments yesterday. Had had bad things to say about both you and Hillary. You following that story at all? Well, I have uh, followed it, and I think it's uh, I think it's personally not a good thing. I think it's I think it's a terrible thing. And uh, you know, he'll uh, maybe he should find a country that works better for him. Let him try. It won't happen. Got it. Okay. Last thing. Look, we started off talking about family. I was in Cleveland. I came away from that convention saying that I thought one of your greatest strengths coming out of that was your kids, uh, who I I thought I thought hit home runs, dad to dad. And for every parent who's listening, because your kids weren't on rich kids of Instagram and they aren't covered with tattoos and they got good educations, what would you say is the quality as a father and with uh, with their moms that uh, produced a, what seems to be a pretty good group of kids for you there? Well, they're very good kids and they work very hard and love what they do, but they were smart and they went to good schools and good colleges and they had uh, they did well as students, but I've always told them no drugs, no alcohol, no cigarettes. I'd always tell them that from the time they were very young, no drugs, no alcohol, no cigarettes. If you can keep them away from the drugs and the alcohol, you're giving them a tremendous boost in life because so many young kids, smart kids, good kids there, but they're hooked. And if you can keep them away from the drugs and the alcohol, it's a tremendous, they will have a tremendous advantage in life. Yeah, very true. All right, look, I know uh, I know that you're in the midst of all kinds of stuff this afternoon. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. I hope you have a fantastic time in Everett tomorrow night. And uh, I've, I've heard from a lot of people. I think you're going to have a good turnout there tomorrow night. Well, I, we're going to have a lot of fun. And, and, again, so many people are coming that know me. And I hear we're going to have a fantastic group of people. So I look forward, and I hope I see you there. All right. Republican candidate for President Donald Trump. Mr. Trump, thanks for your time today. Thank you. Donald Trump with us here on the Dory Monson Show. All right. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you just heard from Mr. Trump. you got a lot of ways you can get a hold of us. You can email me if you go to MyNorthwest.com, the Dory Monson Show page. Those come right to us in the studio. Also on Twitter, at Dory Monson, D-O-R-I-M-O-N-S-O-N. You can also text the show. Send your text to 98973, 98973. But we would love to get your feedback on uh, what you just heard from Donald J. Trump. All right, we got a lot more news to cover, and cover it we shall as the Dory Monson Show rolls on.